So, uh, welcome to Adventure Radio. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to Adventure Radio. Fair we are we are fair to come here with uh, good Aussie bloke Andy Weird yeah, down, oh, in, down, in, down in Melbourne, down in Melbourne, and, uh, and basically to, what we all sound like a bit weird. We're about to sing in bloody Tommy's tribute. I reckon yeah, it's going right, to be okay. It's going to be bloody ripping. And here we go, boys. All right, here we go, I'm mate. Sure, here we go, fellas. <laughs> all right, I've, I've uh, I put up a little number, and it goes a little something like this. All right, now in all seriousness, uh, Mr. Weird. This is uh, a tribute of Everybody Hurts. It's one of my favourite songs. And um, I want you to, 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 like, I've got this really good idea for a book, mate. And I want you to picture yourself uh, on Mars, right? <laughs> but, but, but everyone's left. Everyone's left. But you're still you? on Mars. I call it the bus that couldn't slow down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> I'm going to get into this one. Here we go. And... <laughs> When your days are long And your nights in the night ain't that much better Ooh, When you're genuinely stuck On a planet with no mates and no food and no partner To maintain a stable but sexually active relationship <laughs> If you feel a little bored Well there's always options, just hold on tight Literally and physically (laughs) Well don't let yourself fall in a heap Cause Andy will write a plot for you to be saved from Mars for an eternity <laughs> but everybody finds himself stuck on a planet once in a while. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Welcome aboard, mate. Yeah. Oh, very nice. I like that. <laughs> so everybody at home, and he's just got this light out on the iPhone, and he's out there. He's got himself a, uh, he's getting right in the song here. Uh. <laughs> so I thought I'd essentially uh, start the tune off here, morning. Oh, so classy. good morning. Morning, classy. Andy, Lovely. welcome, Thank welcome you so to the much. show. Welcome Thanks to the show. Thanks for having me. And as an author, um, um, we want to hear about your like. Uh, what, what did you think of that plot? Is it uh, something that you would you would uh, you would you would approve on? It's not too bad. It's uh, it's. I yeah. just don't think it'll fly. No, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. think anybody be interested in that story. I'm sorry, you gotta. But but, but if you go. think about it, like so so the, the protagonist has to fend for himself. So he's got to he's got to you know he's got to build build planets. Ben has to be really, good for the role. Ben has to be great honestly, for it. Even it seems really derivative of Robinson Crusoe and Castaway and <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Right. There's really nothing new to it. I, yeah, right, I just don't right. think it'll fly. You're, you're an absolute flog, mate. Yeah, yeah, you're an absolute flog. You're absolutely right, yeah. I've already mentioned it to a couple of people. They said it's already been done. <laughs> um, Andy, so, uh, hey, in all seriousness, welcome to the show. And um, Thank you. For those, that don't, uh, for those that don't know, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, um, who you are, what you do, where you're from. Well, um, I was born at a very early age, and um, <laughs> well no, I, uh, I'm, I'm Andy Weir, I'm, I'm the author of The Martian, and my new book is Artemis, which I, you know, wanted to plug, so there, I did that, <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, I kind of have a, I'm kind of known for having this random fill into success publishing uh, backstory. I was a software engineer for 25 years. Uh, but I always wanted to write. The reason I was a software engineer is because I liked regular meals. And um, uh, I wrote The Martian. I mean, I, I, had a, I, I really did try to break into writing earlier in my life. I mean, back when I was in my 20s, I took three years off, a, a three-year sabbatical to try to go, try to, try to break into the fiction world, mm-hmm. and I failed. Um, and so I, I just basically made writing my hobby. And The Martian was a book I wrote for fun, and I posted it you know, a chapter at a time to my website and got, you know, feedback from my mailing list of readers and that sort of thing. But then it, uh, when I was done, boy, people started to really like it and it, it hit it big. And mm. just from there, it's just a sort of fantasy that writers have, you know, everything goes right. It sells really well, gets on the bestseller list. Um, they make a big, big budget movie mm. out of it. Mm. Yeah, I still really don't know what I did right. Uh, I've got imposter <laughs> syndrome out my ass right now, and uh, so yeah, that's where we are. Yeah, yeah that's great. I um, 
I must say, it's a great story. I, I believe it or not, The Martian was actually the first um, audio book that I ever listened to. And, oh, just uh, fantastic job on that. R.C. Bray yeah, was the narrator, yeah, and yeah. Uh, he just did a great job. It was amazing. The way I explained it, it got me hooked on audiobooks because I was doing some, um, I was doing some construction kind of work for my dad at the time, and I was working by myself for one day. And I started the book at the start of the day, and I couldn't stand doing this construction work, you know. But I was by myself. I had one headphone in, one headphone so I could hear my surroundings for safety's sake. And I did eight hours where you would normally finish. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm going to do 10 hours today. I don't want to go home. I don't want to <laughs> yeah. stop. I don't want to stop this. It was, yeah. like, it was like your best movie. It was like your best movie you've ever watched. So you playing. just fell in love with construction. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the book <laughs> but, was also okay. <laughs> yeah. But it was like the best movie you'd ever seen playing in your head mm. for like 10 hours. Mm. It, was, it was great. So, yeah, the... I never read the, uh, the Martian. I did go back and, and reread it after the audio. Oh, there's no point. The audio book is the same word for right. word. That's <laughs> right. That's right. So um, I did, however, just read uh, uh, Artemis, which was great. So, uh, okay. so let's say let's just go back to something you mentioned. Though you were you were a, you failed originally when you took three years off. How did that look? How did you, what was failure to you? Well, I, I wrote a book. Uh, it was actually my second book. Then my first book I wrote it was I, I wrote it in college. It was horrible. I mean, even I knew I'm like, well, I'm done, and this is crap. <laughs> yeah. Let me just put that in a drawer and never speak of it again. But um, the my second book, which was called Theft of Pride, uh, I wrote that during that sabbatical, and I, you know, had the standard tale of woe that every author has to go through, which is where, you know, couldn't get an agent, couldn't get any publishers interested, just you know the usual, mm-hmm. and. Um, I do feel like uh, even now, I still think Theft of Pride is a good story. I just wasn't very good at prose back mm-hmm. then. It was just very clumsily written, and so, uh, the pacing was all screwed up. I mean, it, 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 it was not a publishable book, but, mm-hmm. um, but I learned a lot about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and after, after three years of not being able to break in, I went back into the software industry. And it wasn't a hang-your-head, sad Charlie Brown music moment. I, I like writing software. I like being a computer programmer, mm-hmm. when I when I when the Martian hit it big and I quit my day job, it, it you know I I wasn't like yeah take this job and shove it. I was I liked my job. I liked yeah, my yeah, coworkers. Yeah. I liked the stuff. That bit I of did. a melancholy feeling. <laughs> take this yeah, job, right. And I <laughs> I actually stayed at the job much longer than I should have. Like yeah, yeah. I mean the Martian was on the bestseller list. It was clear that it would sec- mm. be a secure form of income. I already had mm-hmm. another book contract, and mm-hmm. but I hung on to the job. And I got to say, I miss a lot of it. I miss, yeah. uh, I miss having coworkers. Yeah, well, that's what now I was I'm a... in this this office yeah. that you see is where yeah. I spend that, that most of my time. That poster looks like your most uh, entertaining coworker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that poster. Well, my, yeah. Uh, and that little porn see, subscription. <laughs> you, you may see some of my coworkers wander in from time to time. I've got a couple of cats. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I live with my girlfriend, uh, and um, we're very happy. But, you know, she's got her own stuff going on. She mm. can't just amuse me all day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No? No, for sure. I, I know. Uh, I know exactly what you mean. I used to work. Um, I'm an entrepreneur three years in or so, and I used to work from home. And it was a it was a totally different scenario from where where we're recording now is a co working space in Melbourne, and it's great. I'm sorry, Melbourne. Melbourne. Where, where are we working? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Melbourne. Yeah. Melbourne. Yeah. Melbourne. Yeah. Melbourne. That's not a knife. Uh, that's a spoon. Thing, <laughs> thing, things I know about Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. One, it's pronounced Melbourne. Yeah. Two, you hosted the Olympics in 1956. <laughs> that's about all I got. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even Don't know you have that. Big no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We yes. got the biggest cricket ground. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, and I think that's where like American soldiers ended up bivouacking during World War Two. We don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna put a right check on that one. That's a look, that's a look of just <laughs> Honestly, ignorance no between me. <laughs> no, I <you're> learned <laughs> that by watching. Um, I learned that by watching the uh, Band of Brothers. The oh, the oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. No, yeah. that's definitely, definitely what happened. I'm a absolutely. Clear, I've seen that many times. Clear mm-hmm. as yep. um, Andy, <laughs> so uh, so when you um. When you you said you put it out to your blog, so did you already have a bit of a the Martian? And I know the story of the Martian, obviously, like get gaining that traction, like you said, through your through your followers and through your readership. Now, what were you doing before before that point? Were you writing short stories? Like, were you still crafting your you know mm. honing your craft and and yeah, half always. a foot in there? Or? I, yeah, I was always working on something. I mean, I mm-hmm. posted a bunch of short stories, and also um, uh, I was working on. I decided just well. Let me go back a few steps. I did a bunch of short stories. I also did some web comics. Mm -hmm. I had a web comic. One of them was called Casey and Andy, and another one was called um, uh, Cheshire Crossing. And I mean, I'm a horrible artist. I am very, very bad. Mm -hmm. But it was an avenue for storytelling. 
until mm. I realized I really didn't enjoy doing the art either. And I'm like, why don't I just go back to just narrative fiction? Yeah. And uh, so I did that. I had accumulated over 10 years of posting stuff. I'd accumulated about 3,000 regular <clears throat> readers. Gotcha. Wow. Uh, which, well, it sounds impressive, but that took 10 years. <laughs> There's about 3,000 days in yeah. 10 years. I mean, yeah. it's not that impressive. Yeah. Um, Tommy was just being nice, mate. Yeah. Tommy was, let's be let's yeah. honest. Yeah. 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 You're like, wow. Yeah. That was oh, great. Like, this is going right up, up, up on the refrigerator. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, Your mum would have been proud. Uh, uh, anyway, yeah. thanks for uh, coming on the show, Arthur. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I um, uh, lost my train of thought there. <laughs> you, uh, oh, yeah, it accumulated readers. Yes. And um, then I, I, started, I decided I wanted to do some serials. I wanted to write serials, and, which is kind of a dying art, I think. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, I'll write some serials. So I wrote The Martian as a serial, and I was also working on two others. One of them was about aliens invading Earth, and the third one was about a mermaid in the 1850s. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, the Martian was uh, really took off from there. Yeah. So, what was the reaction when you when you posted that first chapter up um, onto your website? What were people saying? People, uh, I mean, they didn't say much because I didn't have that many readers, right? Nobody'd heard of me or anything like that. So, people were like, "Hey, this is cool. I like it. Yeah, yeah, it's nice." Mm. Mm. Is there any know, difference like, to the other ones? So, like, did you did you feel? I guess what I'm trying to say is, did you did you feel like you, you may have struck gold with with the Martian? Not or? not initially. I mean, I I knew I enjoyed writing it, mm. and uh, the feedback from my small collection of readers was positive, and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to work on this for a while. But it wasn't like, yes, this is what will take me to stardom. I was just like, this is cool. Matt Damon, here I come. <laughs> yeah, come to me, Matt Damon. Damon. No, um, <laughs> but uh, over time, it, uh, at, you know, when I was about like halfway through, when I posted like chapter eight or nine or so, um, at that point, I, I, like, I would get hundreds of emails every time I posted a new wow, chapter. Wow. And the fans would be like, oh, I love this episode. Oh, this was really cool. And I'm like, okay, I'm getting really, really excited fan feedback. And also it was funny because friends of mine would like call or email and say, hey, when are you posting the next chapter? Wow. And stuff like that. And it wasn't just like the sort of like, I'm encouraging my friend's hobby. It was like, dude, where's the next chapter? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so that really felt good. And uh, so that helped motivate me to keep mm. going. Mm. But I had no idea. Like the reason I posted it to Amazon Kindle at all was because I – finished it right and then um people were emailing saying like hey i, I really like this story but i don't want to read it on a web page can you make an e-reader version mm-hmm. and so i did that and i posted that on my site and they're like hey i love that there's an e-reader version but i'm not very technically savvy and i don't know how to download a thing from the internet and put it yeah, on my yeah. e-reader can you just post it to amazon like and then i can use their system and amazon wow. requires you to charge one one u.s dollar uh, you know, actually 99 cents US. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll set the price to that minimum, 99 cents. Mm-hmm. And I told everybody, okay, well, you can read it for free on my website or you can download the e-reader for free from my website or you can pay Amazon a buck to put it on your Kindle <laughs> for you. And people paid the buck um, just wow. because it's they're paying a buck for the convenience of just yes. going through the system. But that made it start to work up the list of Amazon's like top sellers and um, then Jeez. that gets more people aware of it, and it kind of snowballed from there. You, and so, sorry, Bill. I just so did you. So you went through um, Create Space. Is that what it is on Amazon? No, uh, uh, no, I didn't use Create Space. I oh. just, I just, um, I converted it to an EPUB myself. And then I just went through the web interface of Kindle Direct Publishing. All oh, right. Yep. 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 And I'm just I'm really fascinated because I'm trying to get a little thing sort of like this on myself. Um, it's actually about a guy who gets stuck on Mars. Um, and, I told you uh, that story won't fly. <laughs> I know, but I'm, I'm just no going to push forward with it. No one is going to be interested in that. <laughs> I'm just going to push forward with it. Yeah. Um, okay. Keep going. <laughs> no. Um, um, but uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so you would you would write a chapter, you would edit it yourself a few times, and then and then post it up. Or what? what I guess what's the editing stage like for you? Well, I'd write the chapter and I'd I'd do a few edit passes on it before posting it. Mm. Um, yeah, and so when I was done, I'm like, okay, I'm done. And yeah. then, uh, <laughs> uh, but it wasn't until I had a, like a print contract and the editor at Random House was like, okay, we want to do, we want you to make some changes, but they were fairly minor. Mm, mm. What about um, the thing that's fascinated me the most, Andy? Obviously, always is the the science behind the Martian, because 
As far as I've, I've listened to you on um, Star Talk Radio and, and uh, yeah. numerous different other other interviews where people challenge the science, but you, you, you weren't far off, you know, for a guy who's a, who's a computer programmer who um, was writing a, <laughs> writing a, a little novella in his in his in his you know the Martian yeah yeah, yeah. Um, you know you weren't you weren't far off. Have you ever thought of um, you know like being becoming some, an astronaut? Yes, yeah, <laughs> CEO of NASA or something. <laughs> uh, CEO, <laughs> far uh, administrator yeah. is the title. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Who think about uh, being God of the World? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you got to bear in mind, I'm, you know, I'm an enthusiast. I'm not an expert, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like there are people out there who can tell you like the exact horsepower mm-hmm. and ignition timing of every Chevrolet ever made, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean that they're capable of designing um, an engine. Mm-hmm. Right. No, that's fair. That's fair. But I mean, the stuff so that you must I'm have in that gone first through. Camp. Yeah, yeah. But the stuff you must have gone through, like obviously writing a book's hard enough, right? I could imagine that writing a book and making a, a, a coherent story and something that's entertaining must be it's quite a, it's quite a difficult task. That's why not everyone out there are authors and lots of books fail. <laughs> you actually got that part. But then how much so how much time were you actually spending? Say you're in the in the writing process and you're writing a chapter, for example, and if it takes you you know, a week to write that chapter or two weeks to write that chapter, three weeks to write that chapter. How much time of that is on the actual storyline and the story arc and the, and the character development? How much of it is on science and maths and knowing like, oh, I've got to make this semi-plausible? Mm-hmm. I would say about half of it is about really? uh, on research. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although oh. you got to bear in mind that that's the part that I enjoyed. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's where, I mean, I'm really interested in this stuff. So mm-hmm. looking it up and solving problems and stuff like that is the fun part for me. The, mm-hmm. the part that's not fun is like actually writing it and um, and character interplay and 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 characters at all. Oh, it's an all entirely, the stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's an, you should have just an wrote a big, a big book of the um, periodic t- table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on the elements. Yeah. Put yeah. that into a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, I, I don't know. And also, it was cool because the science kind of drove the plot. Mm. I would be like, Oh, he's going to grow potatoes to stay alive. Okay. Well, how much, you know, what does he need to do that? He's got the potatoes that he can plant. What else mm-hmm. does he need? This, that, and the other thing. And I found out, wow, he doesn't have nearly enough water. How's mm-hmm. he going to get water? And that created this whole plot line that I wouldn't have thought of if I hadn't checked the math and realized he was going to need more water. So you almost reverse engineered from the, from, from the, the, the plot that you wanted and you've gone back and you've gone, okay, well, he needs water, which means he needs this, he needs this, and this. That's great. I love that idea. Yeah, it, it, it was um, – it's basically um, – just doing the math presented the obvious problems. It's like, mm. well, you know, now I've got to, you know. Yeah. Mm. Fascinating. So, um, Andy, let's tell us, uh, tell us about the, the next book. The Martian was a huge, huge success, obviously. How's the, um, how's the pressure of going from something like The Martian where you had Matt Damon on, on a big screen movie and great reviews and so on and so forth and then going to – uh, so the pressure of, of going from there was obviously no pressure with the Martian, and then getting a book deal yeah. for Artemis. Like, what did that kind of what feel like? What was, the, what was the process? Yeah, <laughs> well, that's right. Well, getting the book deal for Artemis was very easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, very true. on the on the heels of the Martian, they're like, sure, yeah. write us whatever the hell you want. <laughs> um, uh, as for the pressure of following up the Martian, I've found that the southwest corner of my office is the best one for crumpling up and crying. It, <laughs> it, um, the lighting is just really good, yeah, yeah. which is when I prefer to do my crying. Love no. <laughs> um, it was an enormous amount of pressure. It was huge, yeah. of course. Oh, I mean, like I said, I got imposter syndrome and stuff like that. I was talking to a writer friend of mine, and I'm like, oh, my God, I've had this, you know, I've got this successful book out there, and I'm writing another one, and I'm like, I'm afraid that people are going to read this and go like, oh, I see. He had one good book in him, yeah. and we've one, one, mm. And that's it. Yeah, and we're done. And my friend said, yeah, that never goes away. Yeah. You'll be working mm. on your 27th book and you'll still feel that way. So mm. get comfortable with it. <laughs> yeah. like, All right. But yeah. so I've always taken the half glass full approach on that one. Like if I, if I wrote like a or half just glass that half is, glass <laughs> that is essentially so it's like mel- a mel- mel- mobile glass <laughs> and it's full. Just, just go to your crying corner, mate. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. No. I'll see you later, pal. No, I've always thought like if I wrote a one hit wonder song or something, I'd be fucking pumped. I'd be like, this is great. That's all I need yeah. <laughs> yep, that's true. But then, pe- but then eventually, someone's like, "Well, what's next?" <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm on YouTube. Yeah. Now. <laughs> you can either be Harper Lee, or you know, where you just don't do anything. Yeah, well, you I'll know, just go back and work or Margaret Subway. Mitchell, where you're like, "I wrote a book." Fuck yeah. off. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's right. But so, uh, yeah, but what yeah. I got uh, so with 
I, but I, I do enjoy being a writer. I want to be one. So I want to write more books. Mm. And um, so between The Martian and Artemis, I worked on a different book. It was called Zhek. Uh, Z H E K. Uh, well, sorry, Z H E K. Mm-hmm. And uh, do Aussies say Z or Z? I uh, would say Z. Was it? Z. We, we, okay. we just, Every, we everyone make it. but America and Canada. <laughs> well, anyone right. Canada says Z. We make it hard for ourselves. Yeah, we're yeah. on the metric Zs. On the metric Zs. <laughs> metric Zs, okay. <laughs> the Zs. <laughs> One metric Z. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's, it was spelled Z Z H E K, and um, it was a story about aliens and had tele telepathy and faster than light travel, and it was like more traditional sci-fi and i got about seventy thousand words into that um and for reference uh the martian is just over a hundred thousand words um i got about seventy thousand words into jack and i was looking at it and i'm like "Uh uh-oh this sucks (laughs) yeah and it just wasn't good the characters were fighting me the plot wasn't working out things were moving too slow the pacing was crap and the Mm -hmm. story was so monumentally epic that like I couldn't tell it well. No. I'd, I'd really bitten off more than I could chew. And eventually I, you know, I beat my head against the wall on this for quite a while until I finally called my publisher and said like, Hey, can I push the big red reset button? And just, I'd put about a year into this by this wow. point. Wow. And I said like, can I just write a completely different story? And they said, sure, go ahead. And wow. <laughs> the reason they were so blase about that was because they'd been reading the chapters and they weren't impressed either. Yeah. Oh, so, well, okay. That must have been so a scary feeling. Oh, God, it was miserable. But I started yeah. working on Artemis and everything went a lot better on that. Mm. Yeah, um, that's and I'm, great. I'm, I'm glad I did that. That was a really difficult thing to do, but I'm glad I did. So, so yeah, I was wow. really insecure, especially when I started in on Artemis. I'm like, okay, take two. Yeah. You know? mm. Mm. What do you do when you come to a, a realization like that? I'm a, a, a mutual friend of ours. Um, uh, I remember when he he'd been working on a book for uh, quite a while or something, and then and then something happened where he, he just fell into this depressive state with it, and um, he actually went to a really serious um, binge drinking situation. He went nuts, and like ha- it was it was probably towards the end of the spectrum, you know. But um, mm-hmm. when you realise for something you've been working on for quite a year, and there's obviously added pressure quite after uh, for yeah, Sorry. I mean, do you just well, how do you pick yourself up again? Well, yeah, I mean, it's my job, right? I, I don't really have a choice. Um, uh, I've got a lot of story ideas, and that one didn't work out. And I'm like, okay, well, let's try something else. Mm. And, and I'm like, it, it helped me to say, like, well, I, I know I have the ability to write things that people like because I have the margin mm. in my past. So somehow I did that. And I've actually done it twice because I wrote a short story called The Egg that was very, very mm. popular. Mm. Um, it w- ended up. It, you, if you search for the egg, Andy Weir, you'll see like a bajillion repostings of it all over the internet. All right. And so that was kind of my first, like, wow, a million people read this kind of thing. And it's a short story that's like a thousand words long. Mm. But I'm like, okay, I definitely do have the ability to make things that people like. I just need to do that again. Mm. <laughs> you know? Hey, uh, hey, Andy, have you ever thought about the the role that you play as a science fiction writer in crafting the future? No. <laughs> um, well, now what it is is. All right, yeah, so, no worries. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, right. Next question. <laughs> so, um, honestly, uh, I do have a kind of a policy of, you know, keep my feet on the ground and remember I'm just an entertainer. So hmm. I think it's a real easy trap to fall into once you get successful to think that your opinion matters. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, but don't, don't so they. Sorry, I don't, off you uh, so just, I don't do politics. I don't mm-hmm. do social justice of any kind in any direction. I don't, there's no morals to my story. There's no message. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. And I've got a pretty simple reason. Um, when I'm reading a book, if I know that the author has some political ax to grind or some moral that they're trying to push, then it makes the book less fun for me because there's mm-hmm. a bunch of plots that are immediately trimmed by knowing that what, what the author from. thinks. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. so if the author, if, if the author is like, you, you, you can spell like oftentimes TV movies, books, it always ends up being like, Oh, corporations are evil. And once mm. you see that, you know that everything related to that corporation is going to be evil. Yeah. Mm. Well, what would be really surprising is if you, if, if there was a book, movie, TV show, whatever, and it appears that corporations are evil, but in the end, it turns out, no, the corporation's the good guy. Mm. You know, mm. that would be a surprise. And there's nothing I like more than being surprised by a book, mm, like being yeah. outsmarted by the writer. And mm. if I can, if, once I set, you know, there are times when I've been about a third of the way through a book and I went like, I now, I can 
correctly, pretty sure, predict every plot point that's going to happen mm, yeah, because right. I know what the author yeah. wants. What he's, what he's, that's yeah, that's yeah, kind that's of right. what ruined Tom Clancy for me. Mm. I mm. I really enjoyed kind of reading his books. They're kind of like fun, you know, wartime, military mm. adventures and stuff like that. But then I realized he's got these political ideals. And, and then it's like, well, every story is going to validate. The universe of his books are going to validate his political ideals. And then I'm like... I, it doesn't even matter whether I agree or disagree with his political ideology. What matters is that, that now I can completely predict everything that's going to happen, and that makes yeah. it story boring. Makes it shit. Yeah. So I don't want people to have that feeling when they're reading my stuff. Yeah, that's no, good. I want them to go like, I don't fucking know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to think the shit out of this one. Yeah. Right. Oh. Um, Andy, so we know we've got to get you out of here at some point. We've got uh, six questions to, to wrap it up at the end. I wanted to ask before we get to that, um, I, want, I want to know what's coming up in your future. What, have you, you, you got another book that you're, um, that you're looking at after Artemis, having a bit of time off? You're, what's, uh, what's next for Andy Weir? Um, well, uh, I'm, I'm, I've got it kind of narrowed down to two or three story ideas. The one I'm leaning to right now, though, is a sequel to Artemis. Oh, cool. oh that's yeah. cool. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. So that's, that's kind of what I think I'm probably going to do. <laughs> mm. Mm. Although awesome. I do have a really a, a pretty cool idea for a story completely unrelated to Artemis. Or the tell Martians. us all about it. Tell us, tell <laughs> <No>. us. <laughs> the Martians. <laughs> no, you get nothing. The Plutonian. Yeah, yeah the Plutonian. <laughs> not even a planet. Trouble on Pluto. <laughs> Elon Musk. <laughs> not even a planet. I don't care. Yeah. Oh, well, is the moon a planet? Hyper belt object. Yeah. Hang on, is the moon a planet? Is, is it, yeah. The moon is the, not a planet either. Planet's, yeah, the, well, the there, you, there you go. Then, mate, what's your, what's your thing with planets? Fair enough, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. 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 Um, well, yeah. Touche, sir. Touche. Um, Fair uh, dinkum. <laughs> <laughs> we're so, just been getting roasted. Yeah, I know, past I know we're getting roasted. Today. Um, it's very well deserved. Yeah, we're probably going to. Uh, I was going to say some. <laughs> <laughs> so we're probably going to play two. There's probably going to be two Aussie Bogan characters yeah, in, in right. like one page of his next book. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Page two being Four. idiots and idiot ones. <laughs> I did in the original in the original version of Artemis. I had an Aussie loan shark. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice one. Well, we should have two beard headed idiots <laughs> in the next one. The Artemis 2. Fritching Tim and Ben. Well, there is an Artemis. There, there, there's an Australian company mentioned. There's Queensland Glass. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's pretty much us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if, we, if we became characters in your book, I would lose it. Yeah, That'd can be you the write us in there? Just, not, just not, get not us in there, much, mate. Not too much of a favour to ask, but yeah. can you just write us in? Just... And just... Plug us to well, it's like I found that it's or best for <laughs> characters in a book to be interesting in some way. Yeah. So, yeah. No. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I find it. I find it. Um, I find it really Brian interesting Brian. when there's real charismatic, handsome, bearded Aussie yeah. legends in books. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> So you have to find something. Is that, uh, <laughs> that the kind of guy you like? <laughs> yeah. That's why we're here, mate. Um, <laughs> what sort of podcast do you think this was? Yeah, we don't have our pants on, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, um, <laughs> Andy. I, I, I don't have mine on. I, yeah. <laughs> well, that was the request. I actually emailed Andy in the, in the, in the um, late last night and said, hey, mate, we are recording on, on um, YouTube, so... Wear, make sure you're wearing a shirt. I mentioned, I deliberately mentioned no pants. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm assuming he's, he's tackle out at the yeah, moment. So. He's, uh, yeah. He's got you his full run out. You said shirt. Yeah. That's yeah. all you said. You just said a shirt. Yeah. 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 Just tuck, about, tuck your marshal back in there, pal. Um, <laughs> so, Andy, um, we've got to get you out of here. Um, we're going to have to do six from six, we call it. It's, we're going to have to do a pretty rapid fire. So, it's three questions right. from me, three questions from Tommy. My first question is, your, tri- uh, your favorite travel destination, favorite place you've been, can be anywhere in the world, just a place you love the most? Uh, London. London? Mm. Yeah. Why, why so? I don't know. I just really enjoyed myself when I was there, but I've never yeah. been to Australia, so. Cool. Well, there you go. Cool, cool. Sounds good. Sounds like a great place to come. But that might be a good, uh, good one for my next question, which is, what's your dream destination and why? Uh, probably, uh, Tokyo or Kyoto. I've never been anywhere in the Eastern world. Mm. And, um, I, I just, uh, probably Kyoto. Yeah. Cool. They have a lot of shrines and historical stuff mm. there. I've been to Kyoto. It's beautiful. Loved it. Is it? Yeah. It's really, really great. Cool. Um, also I speak decent Japanese. Oh, really? Oh. It would have to be, I mean, uh, I could communicate with a very patient Japanese person. Yeah. Okay. Ah, okay. Who'd you are? Uh, Pokemon oh, yeah. Tom Yeah. 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 <laughs> ah, 
That's it. That's it. That's it. I don't know what to say. That's Japanese for you. Well, you ended it. I did that. That was the greatest moment on this podcast. Definition of a smoke bomb. Catch you later, pal. Yeah, I don't know what to say. You're still in Oscar. You're still in Oscar. All righty, all righty. So my last book, uh, my last question, Andy, is your favorite book? Anything you like to recommend to people? Um, can be any sort um, well, of novel. I, when people uh, ask me that, I always yeah, say I, mean, I Robot by Isaac yeah. Asimov. Mm. Um, but uh, if you ask me on any given week, I would probably give you different answers, you know, yeah. based on mood. But mm-hmm. for, for old school sci-fi, I go I, Robot. If you want something that's newer, you know, for more contemporary, definitely try out Ready Player One. Cool. Oh, cool. I actually have Ready, Play- Ready Player One in my um, Audible wish I've not heard of Ready Player One. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be really good. I'm right. You've never heard it. of it? No. It's going to be a movie. Yeah, it's June. making a movie. It's coming out like Steven Spielberg. I wanted oh, to get the, uh, get the book done before That's the movie comes out. Yeah, no, it's okay. supposed to be good. I only got onto it a couple of, couple of months ago. But it's right. a really good book. It's especially kind of targeted at people who were teenagers in the 80s like I was. So I'm the mm. perfect target. You guys are probably too young. Yes. A couple of sprouts. <laughs> couple of legends. A couple of legends. A couple of legendary you're up. sprouts. Legendary sprouts. You're up, you're up, Tommy. You're up. What do you hey, got? Uh, Annie, so what do you like to do in your spare time? Um, I like woodworking a lot, um, nice. and I like uh, uh, also cocktails, cocktail mixing, mix all. Oh, very good, like that. Cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, what about now? I'll make this one a little bit more specific. What? Who is a writer that you? <laughs> Come on, oh, let's keep so it. You tell us you like cock, Andy. Cocktail. <laughs> I hear you like cock and tail. <laughs> oh, so you swing both ways. Let's do a radio. Andy likes cock. <laughs> Would you say you're more of a pitcher or a catcher? I mean, yeah. if you were playing baseball. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, boys and girls. <laughs> hey, uh, Andy. Um, who is this? Is normally a question I'll say. Who is someone you look up to as inspiration? But what about a uh, an author, a, an author you, that inspires you? Oh, um, my holy trinity are mm. Isaac Asimov, Robert Heinlein, and Arthur C. Clarke. They're Arthur the guys who made yes. science fiction kind of. I mean, there were sci-fi authors before them, but they're the ones who made science fiction be like a section in the bookstore. Mm. And um, also. They wrote a lot of really, and this is a thing that I want to do, uh, they wrote a lot of really aspirational science fiction. So if you read their books, you're like, that'd be cool to live there. And mm. I kind of I kind of feel like sci-fi has been hijacked by these miserable dystopian like, yeah, futures. It's always very, the same story. It's like evil, oppressive government, and only a group of plucky teenagers can save us from it. Mm. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you got there. <laughs> Plucky teenagers, I guess. Oppressive government. <laughs> I'm also not sure that the bad guys in Scooby-Doo did that many crimes. No. Like, is it actually illegal to put on a mask and scare people? Well, I mean, probably not. <laughs> yeah. You're very true there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, no, you're exactly right. But, I mean, you know, things like Blade Runner and stuff, you know oh, sure. those those dystopian sort of futures. They're very interesting, but it's it's definitely cool to. to but look even at those then, Blade is sort yeah. of a dystopian future. But the government isn't particularly evil. There's just this bleak. It's just kind of bleak. Yeah, I'm bleak. talking about things like the Hunger Games, Maze oh, Runner. Yeah. Mm. You know, all this these all these carbon copies of yes. just like the world is miserable and technology will do nothing but make life horrible. Terminator. Kind of like the premise of pretty much every Black Mirror episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, about to you say, know. Yeah. I like watching the Prime Minister of England fuck a pig as much as the yeah, next guy. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it's on a different website. <laughs> yeah. Black Mi- it's the first episode of Black Mirror. Blackmen.com. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. Hey, uh, and Andy. Cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, now, if you could invite three people to dinner, dead or alive, so mm. they passed away or they're still currently alive, who would they be and why? Ah, I'd want to do Kepler, Johannes Kepler, mm. mm-hmm. who he figured out that he figured out the laws of planetary motion, and I think Not it'd be cool it. to show him, hey, you were right, because yeah. it wasn't it wasn't generally accepted yet by the time he died, and I'd like to say, like, hey, look. You were dead, dead ass right. Yeah. Um, uh, he'd be one. Uh, another one would be Terry Pratchett. He's uh, one of my favorite authors uh, ever. Um, I really like his style of writing. Right. Uh, he's he's dead now. Um, boy, I get a third person, dead or alive. Yes. 
Hmm. And they can be dead at the time as well, if, you, if you're into that. <laughs> yeah, just like, oh, yeah. why is it? So, uh, uh, <laughs> more potato? I don't know. Third, third person, third person, third person. Uh, yeah, I'd probably go with one of my uh, Holy Trinity. I, I'd go uh, Isaac Asimov. Okay, cool. Awesome. So I went with three dead guys. Three dead guys. That's right. Three dead guys. <laughs> no, doesn't be like cocktail, but you're a necrophilic yeah. cocktail man. I like nothing like some necrophilic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's classic. Uh, um, well, thank you so much, Andy. Hey, uh, finally, mate, where can people find you? Uh, anything you want to plug? Um, now is the time, well, my friend. Artemis, it's in bookstores yes. now. Um, where can people find me? Uh, I'm on Facebook, Andy Weir. Uh, I'm on Twitter, at Andy Weir Author. And my email address is, I won't bother saying it, yeah, well, it's cephalon at gmail.com, but no mm. one is going to know how to spell that. You can Google around. It's very public, and I answer all fan mail. So. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome, awesome man. Yeah, that's great to hear. It only takes like 20 to 30 minutes a day. Yeah. Cool. It's easy. Perfect. Beautiful. That's I'm not J.K. Rowling. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have so much fan mail that it's impossible to answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, Andy, thanks so much for coming on the show, brother. And uh, yeah, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. Cool.